G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Wood, Brass and Glue. I'm Len GXV6. Today we are continuing on with the Scottish made build. Uh, and we are doing the four mast gaff. Um, first up in the videos that you're going to see is the little mini lathe that um, I got that I've been trying to show now for so long. I've actually got a video that works. Um, so yeah, you guys can uh, have a look and get an idea of the pieces of equipment I'm actually using. Um, as I say in the video, uh, it's not the only way to do it. Um, many people have done many different things over the years, myself included. I've used drills, I've used trammels, I've uh, used a uh, plank shaving tool to, you know, uh, just shave down uh, the mask to uh, taper them. Uh, and I've built models where I've just looked at it and went, yeah, I'm not tapering that and basically just cut the tops to match the mast toppers. Uh, as I said, there's lots and lots of ways of doing it. It just depends on what you want to do for your model. So, without further ado, the full mast gap. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to be making up uh, the foremast gaff. I know I called it a jib. It's actually written down as a gaff. So my apologies there. I got the terminology wrong. Um, as you can see, this is the mini lathe. Uh, hopefully this video is actually going to work. I've got the camera in the right position. I can just make out that it is in the right position. Um, these little mini lathes, they come from China. Um, as you can see, it's not very long. I mean, if I basically set that there to give you an idea what you could probably turn up maybe 20 centimeters if you're lucky maybe uh good for the the gaffs i did turn the main mast up and one of the reasons i can turn the main mast up uh, was because this centerpiece here actually comes out and um, the main mast fed through the center onto the bearings because uh, there are sealed bearings in here uh, and actually rested inside those sealed bearings. Uh, that's only six millimeters, I think, wide. So when I do the next model, which cross the fingers will be the bounty, um, this is in fact going to be too small. Uh, I'm going to have to figure a way of making it longer uh, so that I can pin the end here. Now, uh, most people using lathes would use lathe tools. Uh, woodworking tools. Uh, I do have a cheap set. However, uh, what I've discovered is basically a couple of different grades of sandpaper, a couple of different files. Uh, this end down here is got a, is where the uh, gaff piece will be fitting. So this will remain at about four millimeters. This end has to come down to two millimeters. Uh, this is probably going to get loud. Now, speed control on this is actually done, yeah, if I can get it into view, uh, on the power pack here, and it's just a power adjuster. It actually says on here, I've got it switched to uh, 16 volts at the moment. Um, so no, I, I don't actually know how many uh, RPM 16 volts actually supplies, but it starts at 12, it goes to 24. Uh, I found 16 volts to work quite well. It does get a little noisy, so my apologies for that. Uh, I'll probably in post-production actually take out the sound. But... And this is all we do. slow back down again grab this 
Okay, we've taken off not much. <laughs> and yeah, so this is actually going to take some time. So I'm actually going to turn this up uh, and I'll bring you guys back uh, once I've actually turned all this up. But this just gives you an idea now of the lathe. As I said, it, it is a handy thing. I, If I remember correctly, I picked mine up for about 60 bucks Australian uh, on Amazon. Um, I believe at the moment, though, that price may be up around the 150 mark uh, due to COVID and all the various problems that we're having around the world with supply and demand issues. So you don't need one of these. You can use a drill. Uh, and years ago, I did use drills. You do the same thing. You put it in the chuck. You one hand on the drill and the other hand basically going backwards and forwards with sandpaper. That works. Um, I've tried it with a little Dremel tool. That works. Uh, however, having it fitted uh, on a rail and uh, the capability of being able to attach this to a desk uh, just means it's it's a lot easier. You can work with both hands this way. Uh, you're not limited. But it's just something for people to keep in mind. So I'm going to finish turning this up and I'll bring this back when I'm done. All right, so, as you can now see, nicely done. Turns up a good job. And it doesn't really take that long. So, there you go. There's an option for you if you are looking for a way of doing this. Okay, uh, you can go buy one of those lathes. As I said, you could use a Dremel, you can use a drill. As long as you can fit one end in, and you can turn it. Remembering though with the drill, you, one hand is going to have to be on the trigger. It's a drawback. But hey, there's some good stuff out on the internet that shows you how to turn a drill into a lathe as well. So let's not discount that. So next part, we need to put that into that. Now I've already, I don't know if you're going to see that so well on the camera, uh, marked out on here where this is going to fit. So what we have to do is actually shave off um, either side. Oh, and this is where the fun begins. Because we have to do it straight. And straight's definitely not something I'm good at doing. Sticking knives into my hand, that's something I can do real well. Again, like most things on a model ship, you do it bit by bit. Okay, so sort of yeah. So what I might do actually is uh, I'll take this, um, butt that up against there. Give that a few runs, there we go, and that should hopefully allow us to dig in ever so slightly. actually get this to match that could be an interesting trick oh actually I could do it up here that'll, that'll work again what we're doing is we're just taking little bits out at a time we don't want to take too much. I probably will end up taking too much, but you know what? That happens. And we're just trying to make a little wedge so that, as you can see, this will just slide into there.
Yeah, as you can see. So I'm thinking I might just give that a little bit of a point and we'll we'll have a look. So now one thing I did notice with this model, unlike other models, um, normally they have a wrapping a shroud uh, over this which you you know, normally put on. But according to the sheet, um, there is no shroud. So, no. Yeah, I need to just tidy up that side a little bit and uh, she will be done. So I'm going to actually uh, do those. I might still grab some of this. This is the 0.5 millimeter um, that you're actually going to pass through these little holes in the end here and it will fit. If I slide the mask over like this, uh, so people can see, um, it'll go around here. The rope will go behind. Um, try that again. It'll go that side <laughs> because I'm clever. Uh, and that will tie on to the main mast. There doesn't seem to be any other bits and pieces required for it. There's just the rope. So it'll go up and down on the rope. So what I am thinking is I might also take a little bit of that line and uh, put a shroud around this. Doesn't appear to have a block um, over this section. It is one back here. So if I put a shroud on this, it should hold this nice and tight. Uh, yes, I do know that the thing is slightly bent. Uh, the wood is actually uh, bent. It came in the kit that way. Uh, and I don't have a way of straightening it up. So I'm just working with the bent pieces on the smallest area. Uh, not really going to be too concerned about it. Uh, for the simple fact that this will also have a sail eventually um, on here. And most of the weight of the sail and... Uh, the box and tackle will pull everything in straight, hopefully. So, I'm going to continue on with this, get this done, get it painted so that uh, we can come back later on and we can fit it to the ship. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, finally. Um, As you can now see in the stand, I have prepped up the full mast, full mast gaff. Um, if I take it out, uh, I'll just lift it. Oh, you can't see it in the stand because, well, you know, I put the camera in the wrong spot again. Well, at least I fixed it this time. There you go. The full mast gaff has been done. Uh, this is the attachment string, so I'm just keeping that aside. Um, as I said, in the plans, this section here... Um, actually isn't there uh, there's no need to shroud to do the shroud sorry uh, however I prefer it with the shroud on now I do know on many of these smaller ships uh, many of the larger ships have the shroud many of the smaller ships actually have two or three bolts that um, run through either side to do the attachment but I actually like with the shroud on honestly um, so all we really have to do now is attach this to this, but keep it loose because this will be up here roughly, um, should be like that. Uh, however, what we're going to do is I'm going to just put this, um, bit on and tie it on and let it loose so that we can run it up and down the main mast. Uh, double blocks. We'll go together. I believe the there's two single blocks here. They'll use this one and this one, as well as this one and that one. Um, I believe the top one here. I haven't read the plans for, uh, fully yet, but I do believe the top one here is actually for um, the sail. Hang on, that doesn't have a sail there. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, God, I forgot about the glue. Damn it. Okay, so the glue's still drying. <laughs> so what we'll do is we're going to attach this. Uh, one thing I will point out is make sure you grab your little uh, pin vise. Uh, this is a one millimeter drill bit, 0 0.8 millimeter, and re-drill the holes. Okay. 
and just get them clear. Once you paint and do all the bits and pieces, these things will clog up very, very quickly, very, very easily. Uh, again, I've done the same with the blocks. Please keep that in mind when you put your blocks on your ships, if this is the first ship you're doing, or you're actually doing another ship. Um, I'm using the 0.8mm uh, pin vise, that one, uh, to clear the block holes and just make them a little bit wider. And you will notice that, once again, I have snapped a 0.8mm drill bit. However, this one is still functional, so I'm going to keep that one in there. I've only got two more spare. So essentially all we're doing is we're going to put that against the main mast. I'm just going to put that through the hole. No, I'm not. I'm actually going to run out of fingers. And where's my tweezers? Now, I have put a touch of super glue on the end of this uh, cordage. And the reason is, is to just harden up the end so that you can put it through the hole. No other reason. Well, that's not going to go in. Okay, that's not actually going through the hole, by the way. I'm just utilizing it to tie a knot. And I'm sure we can come up with all the not jokes right now. That one, grab that. All right. Uh, and what I will do is I'm going to just snip off most of the rope. But not all of the rope and the reason is normally uh with the these knots that i've put in as you can see where the end of the tweezers is there uh normally what i would do is uh, i'd snip it off and i'd put a little suit or put a little suit glue on and then i'd snip it off however we're not putting the gaff into position just yet we're just going to let it uh, rest down here uh while on the next episode we'll get to the dead eyes and the whole reason we're not going to do it is because if I put super glue on it now, it's more than likely that that uh, cord that we just put through, that rope, is going to glue to the main mast. And then when we go to pull it up, I'm probably going to snap that trying to get it up there. Because, as I said, that's supposed to be up there. Um, also, those knots I haven't actually tightened up. I can come back through later on. Uh, and pull those tighter and get them uh, more firm because as you can see there's a bit of movement there that's fine that'll allow us to move up and down it's not a big issue uh, so that is something that we'll actually deal with later but for now four mask gaff is done so as per normal ladies and gentlemen please comments down below don't forget to do the thumbs up part uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, of course, please press subscribe. It helps out quite immensely. And, of course, hit the bell to get your notifications so you know when new videos are being put out. Uh, as I said, next episode, we will be looking at the dead eyes. Uh, it also means I have to work out how I'm going to do my camera placement for that, but that's something uh, upcoming. Uh, I'll sort that until the next one. Their winds and following seas. <laughs>